Well, it's been a very, very long time since we've been back in First Peter. I've been wanting to do this for a number of weeks and have put it off and put it off, but let's get at it. First Peter chapter 2, verse 1 to 3, it says this. Put away all malice and deceit and hypocrisy and slander. And like newborn babes, crave spiritual milk so that by it you may grow in your salvation. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Now, I've got four boys at home, which means we don't buy a lot of nice things. And we've had to change our share of diapers. But it, it is a joy to be able to hold a baby. You know, when that baby cries, it's very obvious that one of three things needs to happen. Either A, that baby's diaper needs to be changed. They've made a mess and they need someone to help them out to get cleaned up. Uh, B, they need to eat. Or C, they just need love. They need someone to comfort them if they're angry or they're scared or they're frustrated. They just need to be comforted. Now, I think this is exactly what Peter's getting at. In verse 1, I think he's telling Christians, you better clean up your diaper. He says, put it away. Don't hold on to this diaper for later. He says, get rid of it. This thing that is causing a stink, which is obvious to everybody else, you're crying out. And ev everybody else is hearing you cry. And it's obvious to them that there's a mess. It shows up in our speech. Malice is bitterness and it starts a bitter attitude. It starts in the morning when you open your cell phone and you see things that make you angry and you carry that anger throughout the day, feeling like you've been wronged in some way or something that's been taken away from you. It is deceit or trickery or basically you throw up a decoy. You're trying to decoy people from really understanding who you really are. And that plays into the third one, hypocrisy. Claiming to be something and actually living another way. Hypocrisy is, is actually the whole idea of being a stage actor. You can put on a certain persona for the stage, but then when you are done on the stage, you put on another persona and you go back to your everyday life. And so the opposite of that would be integrity. Now, uh, lastly, this is this idea of slander. We do a really good job and it's really easy to tear people down and to, uh, to mock and to ridicule and to make jokes. And I'm guilty of this too. It shows up often in our sarcasm, in things that we think are funny, but actually transforms and morphs into something that is hurtful and not helpful at all. Now, I, I recognize that there is, uh, it's easy to point out these things, but you know, if we were to look at the opposite of each one of those, I think we'd see some of the characteristics of Christ. And the opposite of malice and bitterness is a gracious and loving attitude. And the opposite of deceit is honesty. And the opposite of hypocrisy is integrity. And the opposite of slander is to be building somebody up. Now, how do we do that, though? It, it's easy to just say, well, get rid of it and stop doing it. But there has to be something that helps to do that. And Peter answers that in verse 2. He, he says, uh, like newborn babes, meaning that you are a baby and you need to be nourished so that you have the strength and that you will be growing, maturing, which is the way that we move through these things. So we no longer do them. We are nourished by the pure spiritual milk so that we may grow up into our salvation, meaning that what we have been called to grow up into can be accomplished if we are nourished by pure milk. Now, a natural mother produces the milk that is necessary for that child. And the same thing is true of God's word. God has given us his word. He has given us the gospel in our hands. It was sourced and breathed out by God himself. And he has given us this good news of the gospel that is meant to transform and nourish our life. It strengthens us. We are not naturally loving or gracious people. We are not patient. We are not forgiving but interestingly enough, when you look at the gospel message, it says we love because we were loved first. We forgive because he forgave us first. And so he intends to make us more like the son. And this is exactly what Paul is saying in Galatians 4.19 when he says, I labor as in the pains of childbearing to see Christ formed in you. The whole idea of the gospel is to shape us to be more like the son. And so when we look at those first characteristics that are causing a stink and making Christians smell bad, um, these are things that need to be done away with. Get rid of that diaper. That only happens through the transforming work of the gospel. We need to come back to it for another reason. I think in the gospel, and what you see in a baby when he's feeding, is he is never more content. Have you noticed that? 
And I think that is part of it too. Yes, we're nourished and we're strengthened and we're, uh, we become re-energized and this baby has to eat every couple hours. We need to be constantly in the word, constantly reminded of the gospel um, in order to do this. But also, I think there is a comfort that comes. There's a security and a knowing and a connection that comes from knowing that we are finding right from the source that these are God's words to us. For just a time like this, God's word never fails. The word of God endures forever, we are told. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our Lord stands forever. So just for our days today, his words are still relevant. They comfort us, they encourage us, and they strengthen us for the next two hours until wah, we need to eat again. Now, lastly, we sometimes just need to be loved. And verse 3 tells us, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. I remember a few times when there was just nothing that even I as dad could do to comfort that baby. Mom had to take over. There was something unique about the relationship that mom had with that little baby. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, I couldn't love my kids and my kids didn't love me. But there was just something unique about that mother's love and that that, that child just craved. There was comfort in being in that person's care. And in that person's arms. And I think that's exactly what Peter is saying in verse 3. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good, that is the place you come back to. We try to find comfort. According to Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 1 and 2, it says, Buy from me without money. If you don't have any money, come to me and buy from me milk and nourishment and comfort and all these different things. But he says, because you have spent money on all these other things, but it is only in what I provide that you will find comfort and satisfaction. You'll be filled up. And now, I think this is exactly, exactly what we need to hear today. That we can find, uh, we think we can find com comfort and confidence if only our government would figure something out. Or if only this rule would get passed to allow this to happen. Or if only we have to wear a mask or don't have to wear a mask. If only these things would happen, then I would feel comfortable. Now it won't happen. And so if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good, you're reminded regularly of the gospel, you know that you can put your confidence and your trust and you can walk daily in the presence and in the person of Jesus Christ. He walks with us. And that's a beautiful picture. In Matthew, Matthew, um, or sorry, in Mark, uh, we're told the story where Jesus comes walking us to his disciples on the water. And as he approaches the boat, his disciples are terrified. And the first thing that Jesus says, don't be afraid. Why? It's me. And here is comfort just in knowing in whose presence we walk. So Christians, take a little courage. Stop being so bitter. And maybe we need to get back into the word, be reminded of the gospel regularly, and maybe that's going to start transforming our speech and our language so that we don't stink so bad when we go out into our world. Be blessed today. Be encouraged because the gospel is for each and every one of us each and every day. I needed it today, and I know you do too. God bless.